Hey, a little late there. Sorry about that. I uh, had a couple OBS issues there. I don't know what the deal was, but uh, fixed it up. Um, for some reason, the whoop, knocking the camera. Oh, okay. We're still good. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, so yeah, OBS decided to change a couple settings around for my video codec. So it was like it won't start the stream because your codec's not running and so took me a minute to figure it out uh, if anyone was waiting around i apologize uh today we're working on the kit bash with uh earth bear let me move this up a little bit um but today's really kind of just a test of seeing alerts seeing the chat if anyone jumps into the chat um just uh kind of like a test stream just because i do have alerts now <laughs> and the chat will show up uh in this uh corner of the uh the screen um basically because i'm sending everything over to youtube um just as kind of like a database and i realized that no one could see the chat, so I had to get the chat window in there. And I finally set up alerts, so... If anyone out there wants to test the alert, go ahead and just do like a... Like unfollow and then refollow, so the, the alert will pop up there. It should pop up right here in the middle, kind of where this ink bottle is. Like right underneath the last donation part. Um, but other than that, I'm just going to start laying down some ink on uh, some portions of this uh, kit bash. And we'll hang out for a little bit. See if anyone wants to join in and do some tests on the on the chat there. So here, I'll start it off. I'll, I'll show you guys where the chat's going to be. Right there. So... It'll be up in that corner and it'll go, it'll scroll up to the, uh, the, the toolbar across the top there, the notification bar across the top. Um, so other than that, I can probably get rid of that. Okay. So whenever anybody pops in and starts chatting, that's where it'll show up right there in that fun little corner. This ink seems so thin. Strange. Strange and unusual. That seems better. I, mean, I just didn't have as much on my brush as I thought I did. So I'm continuing putting the ink all around the, um, the under parts or, you know, like smaller 
detail functioning mechanical parts of the uh the gunpla here um and they'll be you know add some gray and want to do some non-metallic metal something cool uh for these areas but i'm just i'm just taking it slow man i'm taking my time letting the uh letting the the process happen naturally I'm not trying to rush anything because i do want this to come out well i don't want it to look sloppy eating up on me a little bit down here just because I, you know, I just missed this under spot with the uh, um, dull coat, but it's alright. If anything, I can just paint it with some Lamy medium and see, it's sticking okay. I think worst case, just need another layer of ink, but it's on the underside where no one's really going to see it, so not a big deal. looking rad it's a little spot there yep missed a little spot just touch that with some ink just get this whole inner circle on both sides just so there's a little bit more in there so it has a little bit more depth to it so you can already it already looks like it's you know I mean there is depth there but I'm just accentuating it making that circular part a little deeper do, 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 do. and just make sure my hat's out of shot there <laughs> all right so we're gonna make some tough decisions here on what else is going to be black i'm thinking this like big under Oh, I need a paper towel. Hang on one second. Ah, my name's Red. How you doing? There you go. Look, chat's popping up in the window. It's working. Uh, thanks for testing that out. How you doing, man? Uh, thanks for popping in. Just grabbing some uh, paper towels here for uh, from the paintbrush. Red, I tell you what, I'm, uh, I'm I'm doing some tests here with the chat in the window and then also with alerts. So if you want to be the first one to test out the alerts, I think the easiest way is to just do uh, just follow and then uh, un or unfollow and then follow me again, and it should pop up right here underneath the uh, the donation area on the on the uh, the notification bar. Um, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, finished work. Uh, now I'm just working on uh, this kit bash here with that uh, I'm collaborating on with uh, Earth Bear. So, yeah, I'm just laying down some ink on some parts. I think I'm going to make these horns black. So put some ink on there next. So get that in a good focus here. Sir. There we go. So there was a rather big uh, surface area there, so I think you probably noticed I used the side of the brush to cover most of it in one shot. And ink, ink can dry splotchy if you're not careful, but as long as you work with it similar to 
how you would a wash where you know you just keep going you don't come back to it later um so everything dries together at the same time it uh works out pretty well Sorry, Red, I didn't mean to uh, geek out on you there about the chat in the window. It's just the first time I've set it up so that you can see it on the uh, actual stream. So Stoked it was working out. So that looks pretty cool. I like that. So I'm going to wash my brush real quick, and then we'll get the other one. Uh, Horn, I guess you'd call it. I'd call it a horn. Red, if you don't know, this is a um, kit bash I'm working on with a fellow named Earth Bear on Instagram, Earth underscore Bear. Uh, he does amazing gunplay kit bashes, just throws the craziest parts together and makes just the most amazing looking creations I've, I've ever seen. Um, I like them better than regular Gundams, like, to be honest with you, like, they, they just look so cool. So I saw this one, I, uh, um, when did I start, uh, man, I started to come below, like, last, in 2020. <laughs> uh, but I've been hand painting miniatures for a while, so I'm kind of, I'm taking that approach and applying it to, uh, Gunpla and, um, and that sort of thing. So I did not build this, but I'm, I'm painting it, um. But Earthbear does some awesome building of the, the actual kit bashes and, and building and constructing of the uh, the mech. So I uh, I hit him up. I was like, I, I would like to paint this. <laughs> so uh, he sent it to me and I'm going to paint it and then I'm going to send it back. And we're just hyping each other up on Instagram and Twitch. And it's been a good time so far. So uh, um, I've done more 30 minute mission kits than I have actual gundam kits i mean i've done a, a couple gundam kits but if you count how many is probably i've done more 30 minute missions but i mean they're they're on par with hg kits so uh it's it's both bandai i mean it, I, I would chalk it up to it's like uh gunpla easy mode um yeah the red beret i love that kit i that is my favorite kit out of all of them i have one built and i have another one <laughs> secretly in my backlog don't tell anybody uh but yeah dude i love that kit and it, it's it's the that's one of the coolest gun kit, gundam kits i've seen like i'm not really into like the unicorn guys or the wing guys i'm more into the grunt suits and um like the the red beret and the jesta uh or, like the jesta cannon my absolute favorites like those just like epitomize like how a mech should look to me but man your your son is a, a lucky kid um astrays are cool um i like astrays what's the other one vidar vidars are cool um just uh like the the crazy ones with like the wings and whatnot and the i, I think they're the unicorn ones eh, i'm not really into those so much but um but yeah, I do like the Astray. Those are cool looking. Some of the some of the spacier types are are really cool looking, but there's a point for me where it's just like it's like I don't know, it's too much. I, I'd rather it, I, I'd rather have a bunch of mechs, uh, grunt suits. You know what I mean? That's just me. But yeah, I have a I have a couple. Well, I have one Jesta cannon and then two Jestas, both in the backlog, because I want to make a diorama of the uh, the TriStars team. Just kind of like in like a, a wooded area or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. So I've got a, I've got them and I've got a bunch of uh, the easy SRs. Um, just gonna make the, what team, I forget what their team is, but I like them from their anime. Um, they were cool. So I'm gonna make a, a diorama with three of them too. Um, this is all like far future stuff though, because I gotta build them first. I gotta paint them up, weather them, gotta make the diorama base. So it's there's a lot to the process. Um, and you know, I wanna get this uh, collaboration 
with uh, that I'm working on right now. I want to get that in good shape. Sorry, I'm not on screen there. Um, watched IBO, but Barbatos looks like it's bar. Yeah, a lot of stuff from IBO has that weird like high heel foot, and um, I really do like Barbatos a lot. I I think he's he's probably the exception to like the because um, he's he's more of like a ground type anyway. I mean, he does fight out in space a little bit, but not like uh, not uh, exclusively. Um, but yeah, you, I do, I do agree. A lot of the, a lot of the, uh, Gundams from Iron Blooded Orphans, um, have like the weird, like two pronged high heel looking foot. Um, I haven't, <laughs> I'm just laying out like my whole bag log. I have an MG Barbatos that I haven't put together yet, but, uh, I think his feet look a little bit better cause they're more like the, um, he's got like a heel in the back. But it's more like a like a two footed or a two toed like dinosaur foot. Yeah, I mean it's all good. Just cake him in, in some like weathering or something. So you don't have to see him. But yeah, I totally understand. Like I remember I was first getting into it and I was like, these iron blooded orphan kits. Like there's a, a big uh, game store near me that has a whole just wall of of Gundams and my buddy took me there to look at them one day because he'd been painting them and or putting them together for a bit um and i was like these are awesome but why are they all wearing high heels <laughs> but it's funny i watched the you know the anime and i didn't notice it so much in the anime i mean it's there if you, you know if you look for it it's 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 there and you can see it but you know like action scenes and whatnot the their feet weren't ever really at like an angle where it looked like they were wearing um high heeled shoes or anything like that but spinning this around and i keep forgetting i'm zoomed in a lot farther than i, I usually am i'm working with uh, some new camera settings here too so the focus should be uh working a little bit better yeah much better on this I had a like an all white and tan model the other day and was like, why wasn't my focus working? <laughs> it's just just a little overexposed from the pure white zenithal spray. All right, I think maybe this round portion up on oh thank you thank you very much so the um the, yeah the ink ink always looks nice and smooth when you get it on there uh in one shot and it dries up pretty quick and then the um the base coats are uh base coats are actually spray cans i did like a i did a mr hobby or mr surfacer primer and then um i used uh some like a like a olive drab spray and then a li lilac uh i believe is what the actual color was called that um as kind of like opposing osls or zenithal highlights so i'm gonna get this little fin in the center get a little trouble on the focus there oh there we go there it's back So I can definitely tell where I missed with the um, with the clear coat because this ink ink is beating up a little bit on some of these smaller smaller parts that were harder to reach and um, I think it'll be okay. It just seems like I need to kind of keep hitting it with the brush and letting it attach to the the spray paint. Um, it's just the, um, the lilac color I used and also the Mr. Surfacer, uh, what is it? Mr. Surfacer 1000, that primer, those both leave a very, very smooth finish. And the, um, the, the lilac paint is actually formula. It's like, the heck, I don't know if you guys heard that. I think someone slammed a door or something. Sorry. Um. The lilac paint is actually graffiti paint, so it has like a satin finish to it. To, there's like a UV protectant, and it won't it won't let acrylic 
paint or ink like this stick to it very easily. So what I do is just hit it with some dull coat or some just matte clear top coat. And that, I'm having all kinds of issues today. I keep hitting the camera, sorry guys. Um, the, the clear coat will bond to the spray paint and the primer and then give you a, a rougher matte finish for um, you know paint or ink to adhere to better. But like I said, I just kind of let it hang out for a second, went back over it again, and it's it's all good. And you know this is this is not the last coat of anything that's going on here, so we'll uh, you know this will get cleaned up and it'll look good. I'm kind of thinking maybe. Hmm. I definitely want to do that little. Maybe we should do the, not the circle, but the piece that's directly below it. Because that's got some cool gradient, and that'll pop through in the ink a little bit. But like I said, we'll, I'm going to go back through and add some, you know, some grays and maybe some some dark blues to highlight and accentuate these areas, do some edge highlighting. Uh, I, Mr. Smooth or Mr. Sur I, don't, I don't know what Mr. Smooth is. I was talking about this spray primer, Mr. Surfacer. Mr. Surfacer 1000 here. I, I can, let me finish doing this real quick and I'll grab it because it's right here by my desk. I'll show it to you. It's the, it's the spray gray uh, Mr. Hobby spray primer. I think the surfacer is the stuff that you can, um, oh, surfacer is matte varnish. I've never used that. Oh, you know what? I was going, I was thinking about using that, but I was reading the instructions and it seemed like it would eat up acrylic paint. Have you, do you ever use it on over top of acrylic paint or do you do it straight over the bare plastic? Cause I was, I was. I had a I had a bust and I was like, is this gonna ruin it? So I just got more dull coat instead. Hang on one second. So but yeah, so in in terms of matte varnish, I use uh, Tester's dull coat. It's just I've had I've used that for miniature models for years, and I'm uh, I know I get good, I'll get good results with that. Okay, so it won't it won't eat up paint or anything. It's just a matte varnish. It was just weird me out because it was like la lacquer or solvent based. Oh, it did go all chalky. Oh, ooh, okay. Well, maybe I'll stay away from it then. Um, have you used uh, dull coat by testers? I think it's mainly for model cars. It comes in a smaller can. I've got an. I think I do have a can of that as well. Hang on. Hang on one second. Let me just. Clean up a little bit. Where I got some of the uh, black ink where I don't want it. And then I'll grab the, uh, the testers to show you. So uh, another cool thing with um, if you're using aerosol paint as kind of like a base as a base coat or to zenithly highlight something and you do get that satin finish it's going to let you erase mistakes somewhat even at, you know i've also i've already sprayed the the matte varnish over this but it still has a smooth enough um hey what's up this looks small this is just the head this is just the head there's a whole another body here. Hey, I'll shit. Get some other pieces in the frame. Here's the waist. And that that's the big shield that goes over the butt. <laughs> um, all right. But yeah, let me. Uh, I was saying how you can. I, I use uh, isopropyl alcohol in my jar here to clean my brush. So on surfaces like this where there's the lilac spray paint 
can get this out of the shot so I can focus here, sorry. Uh, where there's the lilac spray paint, you can get your brush wet with just the alcohol and kind of swipe away any mistakes you've made. But let me grab the, uh, grab that spray paint real quick, or the primer real quick. So that's the that's the main primer, Mr. Servicer 1000, and that'll leave plastic and metal. I paint metal miniatures as well. Um, it leaves them really very smooth. This is the Lilac spray paints by a brand called M Montana. Um, it's very thick and very opaque, uh, so you want to spray pretty far away when you're using this stuff on on really anything that's not graffiti related because it will eat up details if you're not careful and then this is uh dull coat this is the excuse me the um the matte finish that i use so it comes in a very small can i think this it's like four or five bucks at my hobby store but um you know any time of year if it's raining or snowing or anything like that if it's humid yeah, i'll just spray it out my window and and give the models a quick once over and uh it's it's never it's never done anything weird i um i remember one year i did do it did do something weird one time but um i remember i was outside for a little too long with models and i was spraying them with the dull coat and i sprayed them for a little too far away and what i think happened is that they dried before they hit the model so the model was two in particular when i got them back inside it looked like they were all frosted and covered in ice almost but what you do in that case if that happens with your testers dull coat that just means that you haven't shaken the can up enough or you're outside and it's you're spraying too far away so if you just shake the can a lot and really 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 douse them with you know with more of the spray so that it activates the the chalky uh frosted layer that's already dried it'll reactivate it and it'll dry matte and clear um so there's good news there um as far as the mr smooth i'm never going to use that ever because that sounds like a disaster waiting to happen on my end um so red thank you for the advice there and the word of warning Why you no focus? Keep that focus. So I'm just getting what's going on here. Just getting some of these little spots I missed. Little detail spots. Thinking his little horn piece on the center of his head. I'm gonna make that black as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint that. I think my brush got a little dry while I was talking. Red, where are you from? Are you, uh, you said evening. I'm assuming you're not stateside. Um, the testers is, uh, I believe it's a Spanish brand. So they, uh, okay. UK, they should have, they should have testers available in the UK. I, I would, I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, you might need to, you might need to order it online. Um, unless you live near like a RC car hobby shop or a train hobby shop because that's i think that's really the demographic that testers goes after um but they're that dull coat they also make a gloss coat uh, what's it i think it's called gloss coat um that's a very good gloss varnish as well um especially if you want to you know do like a gloss varnish over a, a paint job to protect it and then do a matte coat over top it works really well um, both of the uh, both of those sprays work together pretty well. Whoop. On the camera there. Oh, getting spammed here in the chat. <laughs> Hang on. 
one second. Oh yeah, I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. spot back here and I think I'm gonna continue it back into this little recess that's on the other portion of the head here so I get some real awkward angles to paint this thing Don't look at my face, I'm making funny faces. So that's looking pretty cool. dry out for a second and <sighs> okay there we go so yeah dull code I'm sure it's on Amazon we can check real quick if you want I don't mind Wow, it's expensive though. It says it's 10 something. Um, that's really expensive. I don't understand why it's so much on Amazon. That's pretty crazy. Um, free shipping, but 968. That's so. In that case, I would just get like a. Uh, a Krylon clear coat they have like a crystal UV resistant or crystal clear spray or something like that it's a big size bottle and um, it's it's a, it's like a I, I don't know it's probably a little bit more but it's three times the size of that testers dull coat and it works just fine um, it's just that uh, I have I bought like <laughs> five cans of dull coat a couple of years ago just so I wouldn't run out and I haven't yet so that's just why I keep using it but I have used the Krylon stuff in before and it works fine um what do you paint normally red do you paint gun plus stuff or do you do, you do uh, miniatures um only reason I'm deterring you from paying ten dollars for it is because it's how it's so small it's how many ounces is this? It's a three ounce can. That's like, you know, I pay, I feel weird paying five, six bucks for it, but it works really well. I would not pay Amazon prices for it. Um, what's the one that's used for a spray gun? Um, you mean like an airbrush? Um, an airbrush you can use, um, oh, the, Lamy and medium yeah yeah the citadel brand is Lamy and medium um which hang on a second Star Lamy and medium is probably even more expensive 
to be honest with you. Um, and you do have to use either a brush or an airbrush. It's not, and I put mine in a dropper bottle. It, it's not, um, you know, it comes in a little like two ounce paint pot. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that stuff works too. That actually leaves a really nice finish. Um, and you, you paint, or you, you paint Warhammer stuff. Um, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself and can't win. Okay. Um, I mean, so yeah, if you paint, I mean, I, I honestly, best bang for your buck is the Krylon. And I think you can order that on Amazon as well. Um, because it, it's, it's like 10 or 11 bucks, probably free shipping if, you know, if it's on Amazon and it's a full size spray can. And as long as you shake it up really well and you don't spray it too far away from the models, then you'll be fine. Um, I, I'm really surprised that it's so much on, on Amazon. That's really blown my mind. I mean, if I, I would check if you've got hobby shops around you, like, especially like an RC, RC car or a train, uh, model train shop, um, they might have it for less, I would hope. Uh, the uh, the stores near me, it's you know, it's six bucks, I think, after tax. Um, but yeah, I I tend to stay away from Citadel products. I have the Lamine Medium, and it works pretty well, but I don't rely on it for protecting the models sometimes it ha it has a really cool effect on some colors like especially reds if you paint it over like a red gradient i don't know why or how or what it does but um it tends to make that red look a lot more vibrant and 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 a little bit deep or deeper than it would anyway um you know especially if you've got it going from you know like a mid-tone red like way down dark let's go to manchester town center and have a look yeah, yeah go have a look see what they got i uh hopefully they have something um if not i'm pretty sure they have krylon on amazon and that stuff that'll work fine just make sure it's not too humid outside when you spray it because that's uh that's the spray can's worst enemy is humidity and also cold weather if you're outside in the cold for too long and the can gets cold then it starts spraying uh you know globby and it spits out at you and it, it, it just it's basically because the paint gets too thick to come out of the nozzle the way it's supposed to and the ammo belts painted here on this uh what is this the chest yeah this is well chest yeah chest and abdomen That's true, but it does get warm and humid there, and it rains a lot, right? That that does suck. I don't know about where you are specifically, but my one buddy, uh, Duck Guts, he was he was dying the other day from the humidity. Um, I don't I forget what temperature he said it was, but I think it was roughly equivalent to like 90 here. 90 degrees Fahrenheit and just super humid. So he was having a rough time, but, uh, raining since 13th century. <laughs> I hear that. We get, we get a lot of rain here. I'm on the East coast. I think I'm on roughly the same latitude as, uh, as the uk but um it's it's humid here we do get sun but um our summers are humid as fuck it's crazy every now and then we'll get a decent day but it's 
the the season around here is, is fall pretty much because it's it's nicer out it's not you know it's not too hot it's not too cold it's that perfect in between but of course now we've got these fucking cicadas i lucked out though somehow the neighborhood the neighborhood i live in i don't know if you know about this red but over here we have these 17 year cicadas that so they you know every 17 years they pop out of the ground and fly around and and mate and make more eggs that burrow into the ground and just this gross cycle but um it's been crazy where i live um in my state not so much my neighborhood just you know cicadas all over the place but um my neighborhood is right on the water so the sand the ground is very sandy the soil is um so they don't burrow into that and there's none in my neighborhood the only ones that show up in my neighborhood are the ones that get bitten in half by birds and get dropped onto my property that's about it um like we don't even have the the shells that they leave around the little husks just because they do that as soon as they come out of the ground uh all right let me see what other i think we want to get this this portion here paint that black as well get some ink on there uh secators i i don't know what secators is what is that oh cicada oh cicadas it's like uh it's a it's a ridiculous bug um it um it's it's kind of like a locust but less grasshopper like i don't it's it's mostly head and wings um yeah they're, they're super ugly they're super annoying they're big they're clumsy they fly into your car when you're driving down the road they fly into you when you're walking down the road uh 17 years ago uh the you know i remember they're just all over the fucking place i'd be driving home at night and they'd be swarming around street lights oh yeah they're terrible and it's it's like this this summer is the summer they came back so it's just they're they're fucking if i venture outside of my neighborhood they're fucking everywhere <laughs> so i'm just glad i I'm, I'm glad i can go outside here at my own house and not be swarmed by them but you know if you go pretty much anywhere that's not near water they're all over the place it's crazy and they'll just like land on you and and stay on you and my wife and i went out to dinner last friday and as we were driving home out of the parking lot we were we drove past a couple that was walking in and she goes oh no that girl has a cicada on her butt <laughs> i look over and sure enough the big old cicada right on her backside she had you know she had on just like a sundress or whatever so she couldn't feel it and she, my wife's like should i tell her i'm like no tell because <laughs> that would that would ruin her day like imagine like imagine that you know like i know how afraid my wife is of bugs i can't imagine like walking into a restaurant with her and someone be like there's a cicada on your butt <laughs> and her freaking out so we saved her hopefully hopefully it, it it flew away and it was unnoticed but so we'll never know because we didn't stick around to find out i mean they don't they, they can't hurt you they don't and they don't bite or anything like that the most they do is startle you and annoy you because really i they just I don't even know if what they eat to be honest with you if they just but really they're just they're alive for a couple months and that's it it's there's just the most pointless bug i don't i don't get it um but uh yeah it's not like it it was it could bite her or hurt or anything if if that was the case i'm sure we you know i sure i would have definitely would have told her <laughs> but they're they're harmless they're just annoying and big and gross no one wants no one wants to know that that shit's on them i wouldn't want to know i would rather one be on me and me not know about it and it fly away on its own accord than me ever know anything about it 
and I think it would too because if one of those things lands on me it's getting squashed sorry this piece has got this piece has got some angles so you can see I did the um, I did the the olive drab as kind of the undershading on most parts and then the white and the lilac are the uh, the the highlights so just rolling through getting the black here and there on the the parts where I know we're gonna need it Ooh, I see a little mistake there I'm trying to clean that up so what I do is I, I I clean my brush off and then I don't dry it off all the way that I oop, not even on in focus here sorry about that I don't dry it off all the way and then wipe away the excess <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good call. Oh uh, man. Uh let's hope let's hope it flew away before then. <laughs> uh it was a really big restaurant though, and there was a huge outdoor seating area, and I was very surprised at how many people were sitting outside with all these things flying around. I was like, nope, I want to sit inside because <laughs> I do not want to deal with bugs. And uh they're not they're not that gooey either. They're 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 pretty crunchy. They got a little bit of goo up in their heads, but for the most part, they're they're just wings and <laughs> I'm just I'm I, I, I'm an optimist at heart, so I'm hoping for the best. And you know, they don't unless they're mating with another one, they don't tend to stay in the same place very long. So uh, I think I think she got out. She and the cicada got out unscathed. I like to think I, I'll wishfully think that. We'll say that. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so I think I'm going to get these. Uh, get a focus here. Come on, guy. Focus. <laughs> All right, so these little. OK, there we go. The little vents there on the. I'm going to get those. Paint those black. trying to be super neat here and there's no good angle to hold this to do it even if i wasn't trying to stream it would still be difficult all right there we go smooth that out get this to be black as well all side panel piece Red, are you on Instagram? You have my Warhammer models on there. I'm all over that platform. And do you play 40k, uh, Sigmar, or both? No Instagram. Oh, good. Well, there you go. I mean, if you're gonna do Instagram, all you need is a phone. Honestly, I mean that's all that's all I do. I don't take. I have a decent camera now, but I don't use it to take pictures with. Uh, for Instagram, also there's an uh, a free app called Lightroom, that 
if you know if you want to make your your photos look you know like they were professional that's the that's the app to use um even even the free version is super super powerful you know you can you can save presets on it you can do a whole bunch of stuff it's crazy but hey if you get a laptop you can start streaming Uh, okay no phone how do you live oh my gosh no phone that's that's worrisome are you okay mate do we need to call somebody for you F in chat if you need me to call the authorities. Okay. I don't know how you do it, but more power to you, man. That is, that's impressive. I mean, you're not, you're not that much older than I am, but I've had a mobile phone since I was like 14 or 15. I don't know, it's just mainly an easy way for, you know, family to get holy at first but it almost is a you know it's almost a necessity out here for employers to be able to contact you i mean i don't know if i've ever worked with anybody in any kind of job setting over here where they didn't have a phone other than you know something like retail or holiday workers or something but different strokes for different folks right i mean not having a mobile phone is pretty that that's that sounds awesome because just you're, you're almost completely off the grid and you know i like i like turning the phone off every now and then there you go my uh a buddy of mine his aunt and uncle had a uh cabin in the woods it sounds so ominous and creepy um for a while um uh, just up on in this mountainous area near me um i don't think they own it anymore we haven't been there in years but every now and then we would we would go camping out there and uh, uh oh we freeze up oh okay no oh, we're back all right um yeah every now and then we would go camping and it was there was a cabin so we weren't like in a tent or anything but um you know as we didn't have any cell service out there anyway so it was just you know as soon as we you, you cross into the mountains it was you know just turn the phone off you don't need it we'll tell time by when we cook food on the grill like right now it's 10 till burger or it's quarter past hot dog what are you doing man start cooking stuff like that it's always fun i'm pretty sure his aunt and uncle sold that place though so that's why we haven't been there in so long also because we both got married and had kids but you know whatever Let's see if i can hold this upside down if it's a little easier for camera to focus on it maybe maybe i know this is super interesting watching me paint this little itty bitty part under here let me just hurry up and get this and then we can move on to another part that's easier to see Uh, 
five. That's good. I guess we'll get this inner part here, black on the front. Oh yeah. It sure does, man. I know all about that. I had two at the same time. <laughs> Kids are rad though. They're wild as shit right now, but they're they're still awesome. They're young though. Three boys. Woo! That's that's a lot of boys. Sounds like my dad. My dad had three boys. So, well, still does. Not had, sorry. <laughs> um, I have uh, boy girl twins. So, some uh, one boy, one girl, evened out. And that's it. That's all we're going to have. <laughs> that's enough for us. When we found out we were having twins, my wife was terrified that they were going to be, they were both going to be boys and that she was going to have to deal with two boys her whole life. But she lucked out and got a girl. I mean, I wanted a girl too. I wanted one of each. We got, we got one of each. It worked out great. Going around here, making sure I get the in interior of that panel, and then I'm gonna clean up the front of it a little bit. I mean, I got a little messy, just a little bit, not too much. So I'm just using the side of my brush, kind of like I'm edge highlighting, but I'm taking away the ink. Oh, yeah, mine are still minor four, mine are little. Did a little, little. They got attitudes like crazy, though. I'm sure that's only going to get worse. Uh, it's all good. Yeah, a little bit more on the front there. and clean so let's let that dry off for a second i need to wash my brush and i might actually switch because this one's getting put through the ringer here oh did i miss a spot on the head i sure did all right we'll get that real quick switch brushes So uh, this is my wet palette here, and I only have parchment paper kind of right on a little rectangle here. So I've got all this is just wet paper towel so I can um, moisten the, the bristles. Um, or what I'll do is after I clean the brush off in the alcohol, I'll usually wipe the excess off on a spot up here where I don't touch anything else. Um, and that helps to uh, get the excess alcohol off the brush is you do not want to mix isopropyl in with your paint. It will not end well. Basically just makes it dry a lot faster and it gets real chalky and real nasty on you. Just being real careful here to get this angle on it. I'm going to clean this up later, but Let's get this black as neat as possible. That's better. Spot there. 
Yeah, the ink is tricky sometimes. It you gotta go back and, and touch it up where it's it, it's not either gripped to the spray paint or sometimes it's just because it's so glossy when it's when it first goes on you don't see little tiny spots that you've missed. So when you're working with ink, always go back and um, and touch up areas you've missed. And what's nice is that it won't it won't really dry blotchy on you. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, if I was to come back tomorrow and and do it, I'd probably have to just recoat the whole thing, uh, or just be very careful about where I put the ink. Uh, but since it's still drying right now, it's it's not going to dry blotchy. Some of these spots are going to get cleaned up anyway, but it's all good. And when I, say, when I say cleaned up, I mean, I'll be going back over them with more colors, doing some edge highlights, all that fun stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you got those. You got two teenagers, man. That's rough. I'm gonna. I'll be there soon. <laughs> no rush, though. Uh, what do I got? Nine years. Ooh, hopefully, it goes by nice and slow. Probably not though, right? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> trying to think what else I want to paint black on this piece. Not really sure. Other than the inner framing. Which might be a little boring to do on stream, but whatever. Uh, Red, if you're into Warhammer, uh, I just finished a couple of pox walkers. If you want to see them, I'll go ahead and just show a couple of them to you. Uh, so I do, I played death guard, um, in Warhammer. So this is a little poxy. All right. Yeah. Good. Well, thanks for stopping by, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good night and, uh, sleep well, my friend. Thanks for the view. Thanks for hanging out. And thank you for the compliment. All right. All right. Well, let's see. I got that spammer guy banned. <laughs> Whatever. I forget what the account was. TN Jundia with a bunch of numbers at the end. Get out of here. Don't spam me. Uh, all right. So I turned the music down a little bit from uh, the level it was last time. Hopefully it's not too loud. I felt like it was a little loud. Um, yep. Catch you later, Red. Appreciate it, man. If you're still here. But yeah, hopefully the uh, hopefully the music's not over uh, overwhelming anything. Um, I mean, my levels sounded okay when I played back the video. I just felt like it was it was just a little loud and could probably be turned down a, a little bit so i turned it i would i uh, went from 28.3 to 29.1 so it wasn't that drastic of a change but hopefully it's enough to be discernible and you know you can still i'm sure you can still hear it it's just not nearly as loud as it was on my last stream But Red, if you're still here, even if not, thank you very much for stopping by and chatting. I really appreciate it. I, uh, like I, I had said on um, Instagram and, and earlier today, today's the first time that I got the uh, chat window in the stream. So I wanted to test that out. And Red, you certainly did an excellent job of helping me test that out. Um, I appreciate the conversation. Uh, and you know, we'll immortalize this chat and we'll put it on YouTube, uh, after we're done streaming here, cause I've been doing that lately and it's been working out pretty well. Just dominating each platform, right? That's what you gotta do. All right. So I got that little piece in there. 
I'm gonna come to get this uh, this little cap here so the the connection fits a little bit snugger. That is a little trick too if you're putting a uh, gun plate together and you have a joint that is a little loose or some sort of connection like a hand or a wrist or an arm whatever poly cap paint it and then the connection will be much 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 uh much more snug and you, i don't mean paint the whole thing i just mean paint the connection and you can even just go as far as to or not not as far but um even just spraying it with some top coat or the Lamian medium that i was talking about with red um you know it doesn't have to be paint paint it could be a clear coat just something that's going to give it an additional layer of uh, thickness to it and it'll help those two pieces get more friction and this the uh the bond will not bond but the connection will be tighter especially like here where you'd be plugging a little ball socket into there for the what is this the um those are the shoulders so that would be for the arm you know sometimes your gunpla arm goes boop, and, and it hangs down because it can't support its own weight and painting it or just putting a clear uh, varnish on it is a great way to stop that from happening. Really glad I changed the camera settings here. I'm having such an easier time focusing on everything. The lighting is better. I think I was just, I was in a different uh, mode before on the camera and changing modes really, really helps. I think the, uh, the setting before was just overexposing everything. It was very sensitive to the lighting. So I turned the, turned the ISO down a little bit and I was running kind of high ISO. Turn the shutter speed down a little bit. And it's, it's, it's in, it's in manual video, but it's guys, I still have the autofocus on because you need that. Get all this ink inside of here. Paint every little part of the inside there where that ball connection is going to go. You guys that are still here, this is the progress we've made so far with the ink, getting all these little underlying mechanical bits ready to go. And what I'm using is the Vallejo Game Ink, and this stuff, uh, it dries with a nice kind of, almost like a, almost like a polyurethane shell like it's a very like if you tried to peel it off it wouldn't flake off it would be very not sticky but like it, it, it you know it dries in all one layer and if you you know if you really got into it and you know tried to peel it off or pick it off it would it would come off 
and 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 peel off essentially not flake off like acrylic paint so it's it's also very good for laying down as a first layer like i'm doing to um you know kind of protect the paint and and hold it all in there make sure it bonds with the um with the, the uh the matte coat that you've put on top of the spray paint something something about their recipe i don't know i don't i don't know if it's all inks or just vallejo but i tend to just use vallejo inks um a little bit of liquitex but it it's really just i use i use uh liquitex just to mix colors i don't really ever use them like i use the black here to uh um to really like base a color down but the black black dry is great i love this game art game ink black is fantastic dry a little bit going on over here <clears throat> uh, also I don't like putting ink in the wet palette because the uh, water and ink doesn't really mix well um, especially over time now this is getting a little uh, a little dried out, but not too much. And I've been streaming for about an hour. Um, but I mean, this is a plastic like pill bottle container container. Sorry, excuse me. So it's not porous. Um, if you were to put it on something like a, you know, paper plate or something that was porous, it would dry up a lot faster, obviously. Um, so I have a bigger dry palette that I use that you can just kind of scrape dry paint off but I haven't cleaned it in a bit and I didn't want to use it today because I knew I was going to need the ink to be workable for a while so I just opted for the plastic uh, bottle lid or lid contain container lids I can't even talk right now sorry um, plus I, I was I'm only using the black so I didn't use need a, a whole you know palette's worth of of space to work with but it is a good uh it is a good investment i mean it was i think six seven bucks it's just a tray a plastic tray that is meant for it's meant to be used as a dry palette so it has you know it's the the plastic either has a coating on it or it's extremely uh you know non-porous so the the paint even when it dries, you can literally just, I, I'll hold it over my trash can and run a old, you know, like a credit card or gift card or something that's, you know, um, over it and just, or a guitar pick actually works really good. I've been doing that lately. Um, that gets, it just gets right underneath the paint and it comes right off. slow and methodical here don't want to rush anything don't want to make any mistakes that i go back and i'm like oh shit i wish i didn't do that so i'm just working around the each piece and seeing what looks like it would be like an internal component that isn't really armor and that's what i'm oops that's what i'm painting black with the ink here with my crazy angles
All right, so touch, uh, oop. fix a couple of these mistakes here. So we'll, we can do this live and in person. We can see here, I have gotten a little bit of black ink on the edge there. I'm gonna get that off real quick. So clean my brush off in the isopropyl. Didn't dry it off all the way. And now I'm just wiping kind of in one direction, lifting my brush and wiping to the right. And you can go ahead and dry it off with your finger if you need to. Got a little bit, actually I should clean my brush off a little bit more. And um, as you can see, it is now gone. And there's a big splotch there on the inside. So we'll clean that off. So again, I don't dry my brush off all the way so that there's still a decent amount of alcohol on the brush and just pull it away from the spot where it was. At this point, when it starts to kind of cloud up on you, dry your brush off a little bit and grab the, the, all that excess. Go back, wet your brush again with the alcohol. Don't dry it off all the way and repeat that process. Get that remaining uh, little coffee stain uh, excess ink and just wipe it wipe it away from where it is. You won't activate the spray paint underneath or the um, the matte top coat, which is very nice. Because it lets you fix your mistakes without having to get a get paint to do it. So let's clean the clean the mistake right off. And this isn't necessary per, per, per se, because, you know, like I said, I will be going back over and cleaning these up and, and whatnot. So there is, you know, there is every possibility of mixing up the exact lilac color, even though this Pro Prill is pretty damn close. Uh, so that's what we'll be using to do any hand brushing, because uh, Pro Prill is the best. <laughs> but yeah, I can't even, I, I can't under like overstated enough they're just that paint is so good um but yeah like i was saying i mean i've got the colors to match the spray can so i'm not worried really about mistakes too much i just like to get in there and fix it when it happens just so it's as neat as it can possibly be when i move on to the next step without having to worry about you know, like, oh, did I did I touch that up? Did I touch this up? Does this need to be cleaned up? Do I, you know, should I get, you know, just it's it's less less to think about and worry about when you clean it off in the moment. So I got a little bit down here at this connection point. So I'm just cleaning that up a little bit. And um, also, this model is going to be pretty, pretty weathered. It's not going to be overly weathered or crazy weathered, but it is going to have some battle damage and some, you know, chip marks and some streaking grime and all that good stuff. Um, so there's always, you know, when you do stuff like that, there's always um, the washes and whatnot can help uh, fix little mistakes here and there. But I just like to get it as neat as possible and then make all the weathering and chipping myself to be very intentional and, you know, tell a story, essentially. And, you know, I'm going to put, I, I entered into the, uh, into Zaku Aurelius's Aurelius, uh, recent clean versus weathered contest. And surprisingly, um, to my surprise, came out as a runner-up out of all of the um, weathered entries. So that was a big honor for me. Um, but you know what I, you know, there was a lot of excellent feedback from the judges. So I'm going to be putting all of that newfound knowledge into this bad boy. Um, so hence, uh, you know, that's the reason why I went for the non-symmetrical. Um, highlighting because it's gonna kind of be um you know it's 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 like his his paint job that's been worn away there's also going to be some object source lighting um that i've planned in here so that'll be pretty nice um 
and then uh you know just you know just non-symmetrical asymmetrical as possible telling a story you know he's gonna he's a brute he's called the eradicator he's got a string of gundam heads so he's obviously been out in the shit for a while he's gonna have you know he's gonna be more more earth weathered on his feet he's gonna be more battle damaged up on his arms and his on his shoulders and his head um but yeah i took i took vigorous notes from that um that 10 minute critique so i hope all those judges are ready to to see their critiques come to life um i think that's probably gonna do it for today it's uh it's just about time for for dinner over here so um thanks very much for uh for checking me out today i know it was an impromptu stream and um just kind of testing the chat window and uh i wanted to chat uh, test the alerts so if anyone's out there right now and they want to do just a unfollow follow to see the alert pop up that's cool we can do that um if not it's all good we'll figure it out some other time and 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 you know hopefully someone follows uh when i'm streaming on uh on saturday um other than that not much is going on um i'll be today's thursday so i will be back on I guess it depends on what's going on this weekend. I might be on tomorrow. I might be on Saturday. Either way, I'm going to update Instagram and, uh, you know, put my, my schedule on there. Um, so everybody knows what's up. I'll probably, I don't know. I don't know what's going on this weekend. My buddy might come over Saturday and, uh, if he does, we might be on stream together, uh, or we might just roll some dice. Um, so uh, i will keep everybody updated thanks for uh stopping by thanks for hanging out thanks for chatting and uh we'll see everybody uh see everybody soon all right bye bye